Hello everyone, this is uh, Nolan Schmidt here of NHS Films. Um, I'm all, um, pretty much I'm doing this uh, interview as part of Texas Free Press. Um, with me is Elliot Sherman. Uh, he is the Libertarian candidate for U.S. Congress for Texas District uh, 2. Um, uh, pretty much uh, today, um, pretty thankful that I'm able to do this interview. This is actually my first interview with a uh, with a uh, candidate uh, since uh, 2018 when I interviewed several of the statewide candidates uh, here in Texas, uh, as well as uh, Neil Dykeman, who ran for Senate uh, two years ago. So, uh, Elliot, would, uh, would you like to talk a little bit about yourself? And sure. your Thanks for having me, Nolan. Mm -hmm. um, so, my name is Elliot Sherman. I'm running for uh, U.S. Congress in Texas' second district. Um, it's uh, one of the most gerrymandered district uh, congressional districts in the entire United States, uh, making kind of a hook shape around the city of Houston. Um, I've been a libertarian for about 12 years now. Um, first uh, started hearing about it in the 2008 presidential election and uh, didn't like wars, didn't like overspending. So I started to look elsewhere like a lot of people, um, you know, gradually do find the party that way. Um, some of my biggest uh, campaign issues are um, just reducing government harm as kind of the basis for everything everything that I do uh, want to do. That uh, has a lot of broad appeal for people on the right, people on the left, and people who don't feel like they have a political home. Um, I'm a very a strong supporter of both uh, civil rights and, and property rights, um, gun rights, and uh, equality for, for everyone, no matter what your gender identity or sexual orientation is or um, you know what kind of things you want to do in the privacy of your own home or in public as long as you're not hurting other people awesome awesome and um from what i uh seen on your uh facebook is that uh during the time of the pandemic that we're still currently in uh you went to help out with a lot of uh causes and everything else uh as well as uh uh did some stuff uh socially too um like uh, helping out with uh, food banks and everything else, which is pretty cool. And yeah, uh, the uh, Houston Food Bank is um, is kind of my you know my charity that I've decided to adopt as my own. Um, I've, uh, I've I've done volunteering there uh, several times. I've uh, actually donated the entirety of my uh, my Trump paycheck uh, to the <laughs> Houston Food Bank because you know I, I didn't ask for it. I didn't want it. Got deposited into my account anyway. Yeah. So I went ahead and donated it onto them. Um, if uh, if anyone is interested in helping out uh, for you know a local cause like that, um, my website uh, shermanforcongress.com has a volunteer button on it uh, where you can sign up and uh, get notifications whenever we're going out there. I try to do it at least a couple times a month, and so far we're doing pretty well on that. But um, if if you're wondering what to expect, I'm just uh, packing bags of um, you know of, of food goods uh, for families who aren't as fortunate and just making sure that people can eat and, you know, food's vital. So if you want to help people out, you know, those who truly can't help themselves, that's the best way to do it is voluntarily. Uh, from, uh, Cause I know um, before we did this interview, uh, uh, we messaged on uh, uh, Facebook about um, mm -hmm. one of the issues that, that you wanted to try to, uh, one a solution that you want to do. You've been trying to contact uh, the Texas representatives uh, about a solution for a, the voting issue that allows the preservation of integrity of the system to prevent voter fraud and also allow voters to avoid large crowds and potentially and from large crowds and potentially contaminated voting booths, especially um, since uh, especially since there was a, a bit because especially with there being a bit of a, a spike uh, with uh, COVID cases now. Um, um, so what was, uh, so how's that been going along with, uh, with, with the uh, solution that, that you've been trying to, uh, uh, let the, uh, uh, Texas representatives know about so far. So just, just kind of give people a little bit more context. Um, in Texas right now, uh, we are still partially closed down, a closed down state as, or, you know, as ordered by the governor. Um, obviously right now we know that the virus is still going on and we're starting to hear reports about second wave spikes and it's really something that a lot of people have legitimate concerns about. Um, I, you know, personally take the stance that you should do whatever makes the most sense for your own health and, and uh, family safety and not be told what to do by the government. So if you choose to go out and interact with other people, you should do, do so responsibly. 
and make sure that, um, you know, that is your choice and that is the choice of the people who choose, choose to interact with you. Now, that being said, uh, we're also facing uh, the context of the, we, we have a, uh, you know, an election coming up. And when you think election, you think long lines, uh, slow moving and, you know, all those booths. So uh, a lot of people have expressed concerns in Texas about, you know, what are we going to do on election day? I don't want to be around that, but I also don't want my concern about getting a potentially deadly virus to impact my American right to go vote. So um, a lot of people have been pushing for using the mail-in uh, ballot system here in Texas as an alternative for that. Now, there have been mostly people on, you know, on the Democrat side pushing for the mail-in ballots uh, because they feel like it's kind of the best way to help not disenfranchise anybody. Uh, but there's been some pushback by Republicans in Texas who fear that mail-in ballots don't have the same level of scrutiny that in-person voting does. And therefore, it um, can open up, you know, can of worms for voter fraud if people are able to misuse ballots and, um, you know, maybe mail-in ballots for people they know won't vote so they can, you know, get an extra say. So, you know, there, there are valid concerns about voter fraud, and I don't want to discount them. So I came up with a solution that uh, kind of bridges the gap for both uh, both sides. Uh, my proposal would allow, um, basically, you know, how you can go get your car registration renewed at any grocery store. You just go up to the customer service desk, and they, they'll look at your ID and print it off for you. Yeah. Um, essentially, doing that with your voter ID you know, give them your voter ID card, they print off a ballot for you, and you can just take it home, fill it out. And it, this would actually benefit you in a couple ways. There's no rush, so you can actually spend some time looking up the candidates and the positions they care about. You can look at the issues that matter to you and maybe give a little voting a little bit more thought than picking your favorite uh, letter next to people's name. Um, so you, you take the ballot home, and then you just simply turn it in during any normal election period. So um, early voting uh, on election day, anytime at, at at any regular polling place. And just like you would on an election day, they'll look up your voter registration and you'll sign your name right next to it as you drop it off. So it really minimizes the contact point, the amount of time you have to spend around people. And it uses this existing infrastructure that's already in place with uh, these distributors and the grocery stores who already have an alliance with the state government uh, for the auto registrations. Um, so good idea, now what? Um, the next thing I chose to do was uh, reach out to uh, Essentially, uh, I, start, I actually started with the other opponents in my, my same race uh, for, for Congress. Uh, I know it's a, a state issue, but I wanted to you know, at least say, hey, I want to reach out. Let's see what we can do together to um, help get the, some momentum. Um, I did not receive any return call on the answering machine I left with uh, the Democratic uh, challenger. And when I called incumbent uh, Dan Crenshaw's office, um, I, spoke with, uh, I spoke with his campaign manager, and he, he started to sound like it was a really good idea. And then I haven't heard anything since. So yeah. Um, I can imagine that, you know, maybe there's reasons that they don't want to acknowledge my existence at this point. Yeah. Um, so next I went down and called my actual local uh, reps and, you know, state reps and state senators and reached out to them and let them know. Um, and I started going down the list, all 181, uh, you know, congressional representatives and state senator or state uh, Congress, uh, reps and state senators and just reached out to them. I got uh, some emails back from uh, some of their staff who said, this is a great idea, we'll pass it along. I got actually a call back from a, a few of the uh, reps themselves and they said, hey, you don't live in my district, why did you call? And I said, well, I left a message. <laughs> this is this is what we're talking about and this is something that we need, um, you know, the Texas legislature to have an emergency session in order to make something like this happen in time to deal with this very real and, you know, pressing threat. Right now, it seems like I have not gotten a whole lot of pushback, but the only way to get people or to get the representatives to care is for the people to care. So that's why I'm happy that we're talking about this today. And yeah. the longer they wait to do anything about it, the shorter amount of time they have to implement. But I still think if people have a couple of months ahead of time to get those ballots, um, everyone can go get them. I, I, I think that it will combat, um, you know, you know, people being concerned about going to the polls. It will combat concerns about voter fraud because the exact same thing where people are able to sign it you know, there in front of the uh, polling official is occurring. So I, I, there's not really any downside other than people, other than the representatives need to uh, realize that, you know, have their uh, collective political will to go ahead and implement something like this. Awesome. Really? Because uh, honestly, by the sound, that is a really cool idea. That is, I, I, I actually de definitely support some of that, especially with, with the, with uh, the, the, uh, Second, especially with a second wave hitting and everything else, because it's like, um, because I know, especially with the spikes, some of the spikes going up here, especially here in my, uh, my, uh, my home county of Guadalupe, uh, like it's already 
past, like case it already went up to like two past 200 cases here in Guadalupe County. And, uh, I know in some, some of the other counties, it's a lot higher than that. Um, yeah, my, my home here in Harris County has had hundreds of cases. It's, it's not something that's, you know, just a blip. It's, it's yeah. sticking around. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, and cause I know some people are thinking, Oh, it's probably going to die out during the summer because of the Texas heat and all, but it's still lingering. <laughs> Yeah. S- still lingering. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, right now is about two weeks after the uh, all of the uh, George Floyd protests that were here in Houston, where a lot of people were, you know, crammed into downtown, and we're starting to see another spike of cases. Yeah, and that's really unfortunate um, when you think about people just trying to exercise their First Amendment right of protest uh, are, you know, find themselves uh, infected, and that's, you know, nobody nobody wants that. We yeah. don't want this to, to go away. We want people to be responsible. Um, I did see a lot of people wearing masks uh, for what it's worth uh, when I was there at the protests. Um, but, you know, we're still seeing it nonetheless. Yeah. So um, this next question, um, I've actually asked this with uh, several of the candidates uh, two years ago um, because I know, because uh, especially with us being uh, libertarians and all, uh, we always get this. It's like why the whole question of, especially with uh, – People who are aren't too happy with the two major part with the two major parties, the Republicans and Democrats, and also with the people who um, are undecided. Uh, there's those that that believe that believe that vote for a libertarian party is a wasted vote, and everything else. Um, and all these other arguments are saying that we're oh we're a vote for the Republicans or we're a vote for the Democrat. Uh, what's your what's your main thoughts about that? <laughs> I've heard that so long, or, you know, just for so many years. Um, my, my, my biggest thing to say is, like, we need to stop this this uh, culture of voter bullying. Uh, the idea that um, telling someone else that how, you know, what they believe in and what they want to accomplish is a wasted vote is ridiculous. What you're really just saying is that doesn't serve my purpose of trying to get my candidate elected, whereas, it, and therefore, you need to do what I want so I can get what I want. And that's, that's a really selfish and uh, kind of bully mentality. Um, you know, libertarians have, have gotten to the point where they are. It's not an easy road to do, but we've, we've uh, joined this party and we uh, support these candidates because it's the right thing to do. So, yeah, it's, it's an uphill battle and we have to combat against that all the time. Um, but if you are, let's, let's just talk about the presidential election for you know, an example. If you are a Trump supporter and you really don't want Biden to win and you are bullying someone who supports Dr. Joe Jorgensen, you're saying that you know, my preference for Trump is greater than your preference for Jorgensen. And that's simply not true. Every person gets their own voice. Every person gets their own vote. So, um, you know, for when I hear that as uh, someone who will be supporting, uh, supporting Dr. Joe Jorgensen in November, I say, well, stop wasting your vote on Trump because you should be supporting Joe Jorgensen. I don't want Biden to win. Stop telling me that I'm going to make him win by voting against Biden. So um, really, is you know that argument doesn't stand up to even an ounce of scrutiny because as soon as you apply it to them, they get all you know. Oh no, that's not true and defensive. So when you look at it, um, the amount of people who didn't vote in the last presidential election was around forty-five percent. That is a winning plurality if we can harness that energy. Um, there's another uh, can- uh, libertarian candidate for Congress here in Texas named uh, Kevin Hale, and I like to give him a shout out because mm-hmm. this guy is brilliant. He he said, "I'm not going after Republicans or Democrats." I'm going after the people who didn't vote. Uh, my opponent in this election is apathy, and I'm going to beat it. And he's got all the numbers figured out for his district. He said, this is the exact number of people I need to do. This is the exact number of people I need to tell to tell this amount of people. And he's, he's got such a great ground game, you know, doing his block walking and everything that I just, I, I love it. It, it's, it inspires me, inspires a lot of candidates here in Texas. So really it's, we have the opportunity. There are so many registered voters who do not want to support Republicans and do not want to support Democrats that are just right there for us. And we need to work on, make sure that when we communicate with them, uh, we invite them in, we make them feel welcome as libertarians, and we let them understand it's okay to try this. If, you, if you're not, you know, if, if you're not seeing what you want in the other parties, don't reward them with your votes and d- definitely don't sit home. Because if you sit home and don't vote, all you're doing is just giving them your, your silent assent for whatever happens. Uh, I definitely agree with that because I'm, I know, um, cause I, especially looking at the, the, what through the, the results of the, uh, election, I know, notice it with the, um, as well as the, uh, what was it? The, the midterm, 
uh, two years ago that there was that there, especially in my own county, uh, there was like there was like a good amount of people who were registered to vote, but um, but not all of them not all of them voted. Like there were some that that pretty much stayed home because um, uh, there was like a because I even typed up the percentage and then I was like, oh wow, th- this many people didn't vote because they everything else and this was like during the same election year where we had um, had the probably one of the biggest uh, Senate races uh, <laughs> the like the biggest Senate race we had uh, where we had uh, Ted Cruz versus uh, uh, Robert O'Rourke and then we also had Neil uh, running against them and everything else nice. and it was a and it it was like the results was like out like re- like high compared to like some of the other races that we that we had, even though we did break records that uh, that year, with uh, especially with um, uh, Mark uh, uh, be- breaking the record for uh, most votes by Libertarian candidate uh, running for governor. Uh, so, yeah, Mark Tibbetts was a great candidate. Yeah. I mean, Texans had such a good opportunity in 2018 to uh, select him. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we can talk him into running again in 2022 because he's <laughs> he's great. Uh, people just need to hear him and they'll, they'll say, "Okay, wow." You know, and yeah. Then on um, you know, conversely, you've got Greg Abadu is arguing that you know, let me can let me shut down the state and then you know, hurt hurt all these businesses, put all these people out of work, and then blame millennials for spreading the disease <laughs> oh. uh, when I want to open it back up. That it's. It's ridiculous. Yeah. In any any leader who who tries to blame their constituents for uh, decisions they made, it's that's they're signing their own pink slip. As far as I'm concerned, yeah. Me, especially as a millennial myself, I'm like, I been I not I don't even go out that much either. I mean, I'm just I've just been because most of the time I'm more been working from home and all that stuff. So yeah. the only time I go out is just for either going going to get groceries or. Are going to church. <laughs> yeah, well, right now, this is probably the 12th or 13th week, uh, maybe 14th, uh, that I've been working from home. Um, you know, fortunately, I have the ability to do that, have my computer set up that I can bring bring home and, you know, stay relatively, you know, quarantined. A lot of people don't have that luxury, you know, especially when you're talking about uh, service industry jobs, um, entertainment, uh, hospitality. These people are hurting for work, and they their careers are built upon a market that is open and free, and you have governments shutting them down. Um, there are reasonable responses to consider for you know viral outbreaks, but you know just forcing people to sit at home and collect government checks is not the solution. It's not at all. We need to be responsible with how we interact and figure out smarter ways to do so, not have this government one size fits all, you know, imposition on society. Yeah. Uh, were there uh, any other issues that uh, you, um, especially recently, that uh, you've been trying to uh, uh, put up there with your campaign? Certainly, I and mean, obviously the the biggest and most recent um, issue has been the the police brutality uh, topic. Um, you know, with the notoriety of the on camera murder of uh, George Floyd in Minneapolis, um, it's it's really the kind of ignited a spark of of uh, resentment that's been that's been growing over for years until it's finally boiled over. Um, people are protesting in the streets. People are saying, no, not anymore. And, and of course, in true government fashion, you see um, you, you see leaders like starting to propose military responses. Um, obviously, the protest should, um, protesters uh, who are doing so peacefully and respectfully of uh, private property uh, laws, that's good. Um, but you have uh, what, what we've seen, you know, you've, you've got people who are um the fbi released a report that um all of the quote unquote and uh terrorists uh were actually white supremacists acting um and trying to make them look bad the fbi reported this so it's like okay well hmm. <laughs> if, if there are people trying to discredit the actual um you know importance of the protests out there that's totally wrong and we should be really skeptical when we see stuff presented to us that's is, is trying to control the narrative and say that this isn't protest, this is riot. It's like, there's a lot of protest. And when things get out of hand, is, um, especially when government force starts to get involved, it's it's you need to let people express themselves and propose positive changes. I guarantee you, every every if every police uh, department in the country where these uh, protests have been going on would step forward and say, you know what, we are committed to being 
friendly neighbors. We are committed to not resorting to lethal force in situations where it's totally uncalled for. We will punish those who do so and get them out of our department because that's not who we are. If they said that, there would be no further protest. People would say, that's what we want. Just listen. But you have this vilification, this, I mean, you've got the president uh, tear gassing church parishioners for a photo op and then acting like they were an angry mob that needed to be dissipated. Wow. Um, so that, that's one issue that's super important. Um, and it, it goes without saying, like, Black Lives Matter. Duh. <laughs> yes, they do. Um, you need to treat people with dignity and respect and not use the force of government to ruin their lives. And that same ideology can be carried over to, you know, dozens of different topics. Um, something that I'm also uh, really passionate about is I'm the only candidate in my race who does not support red flag laws. You've got Dan Crenshaw, who sounded like a really great guy when he wanted to run, uh, when he was running. You know, he sounded like he said all the right liberty things and talked about, like, individual rights. And then he gets in office and immediately starts spouting off on supporting red flag laws. He just last month co-sponsored the single largest uh, overspending bill in American history. Um, so he doesn't he doesn't care about fiscal responsibility. He doesn't care about your gun rights. And he's just constantly you know, pandering to uh, his, his base who doesn't really care about what he's actually doing legislatively as long as he, what he says on camera is good. And I'm, I'm running because I want to hold uh, that type of behavior accountable. Now, on the other side of the race, uh, you've got the Democratic challenger, uh, uh, Seema Lajavardian, who was actually uh, Beto O'Rourke's, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, campaign manager. So I've got, I'm going up against some big guns on both sides here. And um, really, I, I feel like their issues are their weaknesses. So that's that's uh, somewhere that I, I can stand strong and stand as, you know, as a different a differentiator for voters to consider. Um, another thing that matters a lot, you know, this is June, it's it's Pride Month. Um, we just had a, a, a landmark uh, Supreme Court uh, case where, you know, they ruled that um, the sex aspect of the Civil Rights Act includes sexual orientation and, sex, and gender identity. So that's something that's been a major, uh, you know, major stake in, in my in my platform is we need to make sure that if there are going to be protected classes under the government, that they protect everyone and they don't exclude people as second class citizens who don't have those protections. Um, there's also, you know, the, the crisis on the border is still going on. It's not getting any news right now, but immigrants are still being caged. Uh, children are being separated from parents. Um, these are a lot of people who have come here uh, seeking, you know, refugee status and they're treated like criminals and our, our federal government does not have the constitutional authority to even handle immigration. They, they can handle naturalization. So immigration is just moving. Like if I wanted to pack up and move to Louisiana, I would be immigrating to Louisiana. Naturalization is where you become a citizen. So whenever I would move there and sign up and get a, you know, get a driver's license and uh, you know, get my, all of my bills uh, associated with that new, uh, you know, that new address, that's more like akin to naturalization. That's what the that's what the government is constitutionally allowed to do. So, you know, we, we have a, a lot of just abuses of uh, you know private property, of personal uh, liberty, of of government over overreach, uh, you know, over over violent uh, spying on people. There's just so many issues that I do care about, and I feel like I've been talking for a while. So let's <laughs> uh, let, let's let's uh, get it back to you. All right. Yeah. Um, so. Pretty much, uh, so um, pretty much from what what I have, uh, so pretty much with with any um any anyone that wants to contact you for more um um any other issues that you uh that that you uh may uh may support may support etc. Um, because I know you have the website, you also got your uh, Facebook page, and as you you also got Twitter as well as Instagram. Um, sure. Do you have like any messages for the uh, more any, any other final messages for the uh, voters out there um, for District uh, Texas District Two? Absolutely. Um, well, you can see kind of right there over my shoulder, um, ShermanForCongress.com. That's my website. It's going to have um, access to um, all of my issues. It's got uh, my donation link, uh, my volunteer sign up link. Um, it's got information for you know if you want to keep track of uh, you know what what news is going on with the campaign. Um, so it's a really good resource there. Um, donations do absolutely help, uh, especially for, um, 
for challenger candidates. Um, it's, I'm, you know, I'm going up against two machines that are funded with millions of dollars and, um, you know, I've, I've got the best message, but you know, you, you gotta, you gotta get money to help, help get that message out there. So, um, anything you can donate helps directly, uh, with what, whether it comes to uh, digital, uh, digital ads, uh, yard signs, door hangers, um, updating website to be more dynamic, include more of a store function is something a project I'm working on right now. Um, you can also follow me on Facebook. I, I do probably the majority of my content posting there. Uh, it's facebook.com uh, slash Sherman for Congress. And you can see it's, it's spelled out S C H E I R M A N. Uh, my Twitter is uh, twitter.com slash vote Sherman. And that again is S C H E I R M A N. And my Instagram, uh, just like the Facebook is uh, at Sherman for Congress. So um, that's where I have uh, a lot of my, all of my uh, social media content. Uh, I'm very responsive on there. If you do have questions, I'm not going to give you any kind of canned, uh, you know, canned uh, politician speak responses. I'll give you, I'll have a real conversation with you because people seem to forget that this job is to represent people. Um, I want to represent the people in the district. And if they have questions about what I want to do, you know, if I'm doing that job, they absolutely have every right to ask that. This running a campaign is a job interview and every single person in the district is the hiring manager. So what my, my, what I'm trying to do is just get my foot in the door, get into those offices and let them, let them hear what I have to say, because I've got the best message. Awesome. Well, thanks Elliot for, uh, 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 for, uh, let me interview you for, uh, for, for the uh, Texas free press as, uh, for, especially, um, especially the same with me. Um, I'm going, along with this video, there's also going to be a column that I'm going to write, uh, to help, to help support your campaign for this for this election year um also for anyone that uh that's that watched this video i want to thank you for watching and uh please be sure to visit elliot's website as well as uh, the other uh social me media uh links that will be down in the description below uh this has been nolan schmidt and um uh, again uh, with uh elliot sherman and i'm signing off